in Islam? Or, yeah. And it talked about one of the, and obviously you guys are reasonably peaceful and stuff, but it talked about war being employed to defend your religion. What do you guys mean by that? Is that... Look, I mean, Islam is not the production of right? Islam came to be a little bit of the practice right now is came to be 1400 years ago. It started an environment, the policy of this environment was the survival for the fittest, for the strongest. And the history that proved that, that in the time of war, people used to fight to survive. The desert of Arabia witnessed a large number of tribes. Those tribes survived on, uh, on fight. And just like, you know, um, uh, shivered hot, you know, producing, you know, uh, uh, sheep and uh, camels and this kind of thing. So for them to survive, they need to take the land that grows, grass and there's greenery stuff there. So Islam came to unify those tribes and make, a, 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 a establish a country for us. So it's a state, not just the tribes fighting. So, the people of that time used to be pagans and worship idols, which is not actually, which is not a human way of thinking, but to worship idols and statues, to think of the God of authority and the, uh, the power to control your life, they just are human made stuff. So Islam, Islam, the Prophet of Islam advised the people to only worship one God, the creator, the one who deserves it. And to get the distraction from this evil power, the distractions of good behavior, ethics, Good manners. Before they used to follow no ethics, the survival to the, or to the fittest or to the strongest. No ethics at all. Kill any time, take the property of anyone, no rules. Society of no rules. So when Islam, when the Prophet called the people to that, the leaders, the people who, the dictators of that time, they didn't accept it because it's gonna uh, control their their freedom. They don't want that. Then they start persecuting the Muslim trying to put an end to Islam. For 15 years, the Muslims even were not allowed to speak up and to say anything. Justice is Until the Muslims were drived away from their land, from their town, which is Mecca, to another place to establish their own faith and to practice, live their life normally. So they had one option, to leave, leave their hometown or to die under persecution. So they preferred to move. It should be the end of the story, but the people of their hometown were not happy with them to move even to let to live. So they start attacking them, trying to put an end to it. It is not until that moment, 13 years after the prophet started calling the people, it is only that time that the Muslims were given permission just to stand up for their own rights and say no. And this was the beginning of this policy of self defense. Every the freedom of faith, the freedom of religion is we proud ourselves of being civilized nations because we give freedom of, of faith, freedom of expression. At that time, there was no freedom of expression. Freedom of so the Muslims even left their land, they moved to other land, but still they have been pursued by their home and people of their hometown who wanted to kill them or to put an end to them. So the Muslims had to speak up and to defend themselves. The Muslims were well minority. And that is uh, the beginning of this concept of self-defense, or what we call a jihad. In Islam, the name for that is the jihad. A jihad, actually, is an Arabic word. So the proper place to look for the meaning of this word, jihad, is an Arabic diction. If I, if, I look for a, if I want to look up the meaning of an English word, the best place is to look at uh, an English diction. Am I right? Yep. So jihad means to exert effort, to stop the evil. Exert effort to stop the evil and to put yourself on the right place. So there are different types of jihad. One of them is to jihad in nafs, that is to put yourself under control. That is to control yourself so you don't hurt others. I mean, don't give yourself this absolute and unquestioned freedom. You've got to put yourself under control of the society. So you're not supposed to violate the freedom of other people. That is to put myself. When I get angry, I put myself under control so I don't hurt other people because I'm angry. One of these jihad types of jihad is to stop the evil and stop the persecution. 
the persecution, they used to live under this persecution for years, was to stop the people from fighting them or taking their land or killing their children. So that's why they had to fight. Fight was initiated to save the people. So in their new land, the Muslims were given permission to stop the people from attacking them for about eight years. And then when they had enough from that, they used another policy in the war, which is deterrence. Deterrence means stop the people from even marching to come and attack you by intimidating them. Just give them that. You people better to stay in your place, don't come close to me, otherwise you will not be not going to be happy with the results. It will save lives, save energy. And Islam is the only religion and the only faith in the face of earth that set up the ethics of war. The ethics of war tell very clearly that it is not war to attack. This war is not to win, it is to stop persecution, stop oppression. Muslims in the world time, in the way they did not allow it to kill women, not allow it to kill elders and children. Not allowed to cut the tree, to destroy houses, or to put people under persecution, or to mutilate the, 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 the bodies of the casualties, and other people, the dead people, and to stop or cease fire once the other side, or the people who attack, once they seek, they ask for ceasefire, they should ceasefire them straight away. I mean, it's not to go further and put an end now, it's not an eradication or a punishment. Once they won't ask for ceasing fire, that they have to cease fire instead of this. The ethics of this. These are the ethics of it. So this Islam, with the religion of justice, were not welcome in this environment. At that time, there was two empires. The Persian Empire and the Roman Empire. They were controlling the world. They were the superpower. So what happened? Those people were not happy with this new established state of Islam that going to spread peace and put an end to slavery. Slavery was very well, uh, what do you call, very spread uh, practice at that time. So what happened? Those two empires wanted to put an end to this Muslim, growing Muslim state. So they start marching towards the Muslim state. Because the Muslim state was a start, uh, was a, a new Muslim, a new land, I mean, few people, not much people, and those empires have a big force, and big power, great power. So the only option for the Muslim is to take the initiative and march to their own land, stop them even from marching. And this was the case. So they marched to their land, stopped them from proceeding to their land, and to add as well spread the message of justice to these nations. Because these nations used to live in persecution and oppression for years. And what happened? Those nations accepted Islam and they become Muslim. Muslim nation. See the North African countries they adopted Islam. The Asian countries, you know, outside Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, India even one day was Muslim. China, these lands used to be Muslim lands before. Why people accept it? It's not under enforcement because those people, few people from Arabia, can't enforce these huge nations. It is just because they welcome the concept of justice. And they, they, they found in Islam the only way to get rid of dictatorship and dictators. There is no divine authority for anyone anymore. Because those dictators used to rule the people, persecute the people, and the, the claim of divine authority. I got the divine authority from the God to rule you. So people had no right to say no or to say justice. No. So they have divine unquestionable authority. So Islam put an end to this myth. I said, no, everyone has a right to live peacefully and normally. To take this message or to spread this democracy or this uh, justice, the Muslims have to move. And move and to use the, the force sometimes to stop those the dictators from continuous persecution. What happened after that? The Muslims went back to their land. No more. Because they already spread the message, took the word, they told the people what how to establish. The people themselves adopted Islam and concepted embraced Islam and they became Muslims. Later on when the when the Mongols Mongols from China and uh, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, Asia, when they wanted to destroy the world because they were very people, they wanted to destroy, they colonized a big part of the Muslim land. What happened to them? Did they adopted Islam. Why? Because I mean, Islam at that time was Muslims. They were very weak. They were under attack. So the superpower, the people who came to attack the Muslims and they took their land and killed of them, are the same people who accepted Islam because they couldn't resist the power of Islam, the power of justice, peaceful life. So they had the upper hand, 
but and they ended up accepting Islam because they, they they came to know that this Islam is not an evil thing, it is just a good way of life. So and instead of living this brutal life and this criminal life, it is better to change our style of life and they became converted to Islam and they established an Islamic empire in India that lasted for, for years and years. So the concept of war, there is nothing called holy war in Islam. There is, not, there is no word in Islam. This is the Quran here. It is computerized. And you can easily search for uh, this word, holy war. It is, it is not there. It is not there at all. There is nothing like that. There is the war, the word battle and fighting come in the context of stopping the aggression and persecution. Only in a situation when there is persecution, aggression on a human race, Muslims have to stop it. If using the word, if word can work, then you can use it vocal reaction. Uh, if the vocal reaction can't help or doesn't stop this violence or this aggression, they have to use the force to do that. Once the aggression finish or come to an end, they have to cease fire. They have to follow the ethics of war. The ethics of war is not to kill, to destroy. It is just to stop the aggression. So women have nothing to do with that. Citizens have nothing to do with this, this aggression. They only target the fighting power. Not the innocent people, not the houses, not the factories, not the towns or the fields. Those things have nothing to do with war. So there is no room for, for them to kill, destroy, to uh, demolish houses and buildings or to target the civilians or the innocent people or the children. They have nothing to do with that. Only those, you know, the, the, the militant power that help the dictator to enforce the people or to persecute the people, that is the militant power that need to be fought. That is to be fought. But the rest of the, the people of the nation, they are they need to be secured and to be saved from from any kind of attack or any kind of so uh, this is the right understanding of war it is more about defending justice defending justice and if anyone misuse this word and try to do some violent action in the name of Islam he doesn't have reference this is a Quran here this is a Quran here right so, for example, if I, if I go to a pharmacy and I'm asking for a medical, for some medicine that is prescription medicine, what's the first question that the pharmacist asks you? Do you have a prescription? If I say no, I say, sorry, I can't give you the medicine because you have a prescription. If he take, try to take this medicine by force, he is wrong because I ask you for reference. That's it. Same. The Quran says, don't do that. If somebody wants to do it, then the, the Quran will charge him. The Islam say, why do it? You don't have reference. This is the Quran. Show me the reference. Why are you doing that? And I would approve it. If I show the, the pharmacist that I need this direct, and this is a prescription, then even if this is a wrong prescription, I would blame the doctor who prescribed it, not the patient. So the same thing, this is a, this is a person who would like to enforce the people or to do some wrong thing. Okay, show me the reference from the, from the Quran, this is the source of Islam. Show me the reference. If you got the reference, then I got to blame the Quran. The Quran is the advising the people to do that, advising the people to be violent, advising them. Okay, but if there is no reference, then the responsibility sit on the shoulder of that person, not on the Quran itself. So the Quran has nothing to do with the, with, with the misuse of violence or power, regardless of the names that the people give to themselves. I, I represent that as, you know, I, I, I don't care about what name you give to yourself. I just to care about where did you get this from? What's your reference? This is the Quran here. It's, it's not, it is not only for Muslims to get access to this Quran. It is for everyone. It's a free for, for a charge online. It is available, printed out everywhere in the world. So it is not a secret agenda, it is not a secret information. What we need to be positive when we read it, and to, to be like, uh, uh, to be just, I mean, when we read it, to be just honest and positive. Let's read it with positive uh, perspective. So we, we know the truth, what is the truth behind it. So that is, that is you know, simply or briefly the 
Don't expect from me if you come and insult me and put me down and humiliate my face and target my holy things and then you expect me, you know, regardless of my face, to keep silent and to be quiet and to just smile back. This is actually what Islam had advised, but in fact it's hurting. It actually spoils the stability of a community if one one follow one group of people who follow a certain faith target the other faith and insult it and offend it intentionally, deliberately, putting them down, actually create tension to the other side. And it becomes a human nature now to react what they call to react to that way. What you call it aggressive way. Because you are targeting me. Same as a Muslim, I am not allowed at all to target or offend or abuse anyone's faith or anyone's beliefs at all. They have the full right say they don't they're not supposed to do to me like that and I don't suppose it. So that's it. Fine, we live together in peace. For your own faith. Also let me follow my own faith and that's it. And provide everyone's doing their best for the community and everyone's just getting along. It's I guess do you know what I mean by let bygones be bygones? Have you heard the phrase before? Let bygones be bygones, you do your thing, I'll do my thing and we'll live together in harmony. Exactly. That, that's it. That's yeah. it. But I mean if you have a cat, for example, at home, your pet, and it happened make accidentally that you step on the tail. What will be the reaction of this lovely cat? It's gonna turn around and try to first free her tail. Sometimes it might be scratch your Why? Because now you are hit, right? But if it, if, if it doesn't happen then you're gonna enjoy this pain. See? It just don't come and you know suffocate my neck and say I'm gonna kill you, kill you and expect me to just to do nothing. Natural, that's a human nature. I, I want to be I feel secure. So let me do practice my religion freely. And also, I think you practice it, then harmony, peace, tolerance, coexistence, this will be the domain. This will be the, the status quo. This, this will be the case. You see? But otherwise, it will create tension. Regardless of the faith, this is the human nature. Anyone following any, any people of a particular faith attack other people of a particular faith, tension starts. Right. Regardless of this faith, that, that's how it goes. And that's where the jihad comes in because you're saying, right, well, you're persecuting me for believing what I want to believe. Exactly. And that's where the, yeah, I'm You see, so in the beginning, even the Muslims, they lifted the land, they lifted the land, they said, okay, let us to migrate. We're going to leave the town for you. If you're not happy with us, to break the this, okay, let's go and move out. This was, it, was, it should be the end of the story, okay? I'm, 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 I left everything. They left behind their houses, their land, everything is on. Let me move. They moved to a town which is about 460 kilometers far away from the town. Back in the day, it was a long distance, three, four days travel. But they pursued them, they followed them. They wanted to kill them again. So that it becomes now self-defense. Leave, leave me alone. I don't attack you, why come and attack me? Yeah, so, so that it, it, it was logic. It was, uh, it was logic okay. yeah. and acceptable yeah. self-defense. It's not, it's not about attacking other And in all cases, the initiative started no, from the other side. That's too much noise. Yes. Otherwise, I'd miss out. And until they take the policy of what they call veterans, yeah. that is to try to intimidate the other side and stop them from proceeding. No, I can't. Just to show that I am powerful as well. It's not attacking, but just telling them I was. I can not stop them from proceeding. Hmm? Just to save the power and save the life of other people. Because even marching or uh, moving and and from one place hmm? to yeah, other place, time. this is actually going to affect both sides. So it's, it's stopping this from even from starting. This was it helped the Muslim to at some stage to take the initiative and just to go out and say that we are here, you're not coming, come, come to me, you can't like that. It's just intimidating the other side. Not attacking, just intimidating to stop it from even taking place, to stop the battle and war from the taking place. Once the, the message of Islam was out and people know about it, there was no more. I mean, it's 100 years, more than 800 years now, the Muslims didn't take initiative of any war at all. Why? Because it's not needed, not needed anymore. Why? Because just, I, I wanted to tell the people about justice and what Islam and the good man, and that's it. I've done my job, it's finished. So I'm done. I'm done now. No more. I don't need it anymore. It's now only about, you know, that, you know, after that it started to become like you know, nationalism, people can be kind of colonizing another country and the people that can be, you know, try to get the freedom. I mean, regardless of their face, it just happened like in the world, in a time of what they call Cold War, it was like war for power. 
for wealth, not for religion and knowledge, just like trying to control the wealth, the world, the natural resources. It was all about power, nothing to do with religion. And countries involved in engaging in war, and it resulted in the death of millions of people for no reason, just because some countries won't take more power, more authority. And um, of course, I mean, you are aware of the world war, first world war, second, nothing to do with, with religion, it's just about power and you know, the superpower and which can be and natural resources controlling the uh, natural resources of the world. And ended up, you know, millions of people got killed for nothing, for no, no reason, just because of greediness and seeking, uh, pursuing power. That's it. But the religion is free from this, these charges at all. If it is used by those dictators, it is just to justify the crimes. To say, oh, I'm doing a crime, but it's just in the name of religion, in the name of God. Just to, to be free from responsibility. But of course, all religions, I believe, they are free from this accusation. They have nothing to do with these kind of things. It's just trying to misuse it, to authorize, and to justify their... Directions. their directions and their political agenda. But in fact, if we investigate clearly and honestly, positively, we're going to come to know for sure that religion is free from this accusation. have nothing to do with this kind of violence. Provides tolerance. Yeah, this is a, the case of religion. But if you see, if you take anything from the context, if you, if you, if you cut part of a verse, or a text from any religious book. I can, you know, you can go to any religious book, any divine book, and you cut a verse from its context. You can show that it, it, it provoke violence, but it's out of the context. It's, if you put it in the right context, you see the whole picture, you can understand what, what actually does it mean. But what does it mean? And instead of just taking just, you know, and this business starts actually from the time that people used to, you know, when, when the people, the time of the Cold War, people start using the religion. But how to use the religion to justify my, my crimes? Taking the verses from the context, putting them together, and show the world that oh, that's why my religion says, do that, do this. But this is actually lying to them, you know? This is not what your religion say. It's just you are lying to your religion. You are trying to justify your action. Put them back again. Let me read the whole, the whole context. And now I can understand that you are lying. You see? This, this, this is in all your religion. No exception. No exception. Including the Quran, of course, and the religion of Islam. Awesome, mate. Thank you very much. For that. Really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. And thank you for interest. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, take care, right? Thank you. Oops, Hey. Hey. I'm a um, student journalist and I'm just doing a story basically on the whole open day. So it'd be a lot more lighthearted and less in depth than that was. But, um, so uh, can I just get you to write your name and your title just so I can use it in my story? Okay. I have a very nice handwriting, but it's not readable. Okay? okay. <laughs> just like, you know, um, calligraphy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
research or anything like that, it's just kind of us kind of coming in and getting some, just getting to know the community, just through interviews and stuff like that. Um, that's fine, for me. Yeah. we don't have any issue actually with recording, for the main purpose for this day, we used to, um, what do you call, to introduce our community and our community, the society and organizations, and we try to work together for the development of the community. 
So what kind of needs do you know? Is it disabilities or what kind of needs? Very holistic, yeah. Very. Yeah, definitely. And, and seeing if there's communication barriers, if there's. If, if, awareness I don't know. And if, and if, if culturally safe as, as a health professionals to your culture as well, I think, is, is really important. And enabling um, therapeutic relationships with people from different backgrounds. And if that's been met in health and healthcare, I think. Most of the members of the community here